All right. Um, I'm Christine Ward, uh, and I'm a content strategist and SEO specialist here at Corner Shop. Um, so today, uh, like Ira mentioned, we're going to cover uh, some of those SEO basics. Um, we're always here to help um, and are able to do some of the more complicated or technical SEO work. But there's also a lot that you can do on your own to help boost your website within search engines like Google. Um, so uh, SEO stands for search engine optimization. And that includes any work aimed at improving page rankings for target keywords on search engines like Google. Um, so large search engines use lots of different factors to determine page rankings for different search terms, um, some of which are kept secret from the public. Um, but through deduction um, and different uh, releases that they've uh, come out with, many of those elements um, of what makes a page rank highly have been discovered, um, allowing organizations to create uh, optimized content that will help drive traffic to your website. Uh, so before we dive too far in, we're going to take a quick joke break. Um, so feel free to submit any answers into the chat or uh, yell them out. Um, but why did the SEO specialist cross the road? Any guesses? To create more traffic. All right. Um, so while Google is not the only search engine in the world, um, it is the most popular by far. Uh, so it's what we recommend following most closely when it comes to SEO. Um, plus, uh, since it's uh, one of the most advanced algorithms, um, if you're doing well in Google, you're probably going to be doing well in other search engines as well. We don't know that exact algorithm. Um, like I mentioned before, Google has not made it public. Um, it's also always changing, so they'll roll out a few updates a year. Um, there's probably a big one coming in the next year or so with um, some AI-generated conversational search results um, that look very interesting. Um, but we've gotten some questions around what that update will mean for SEO. Um, it's just really tough to say how any update will impact organic search rankings until it happens. Um, but all that to say, we do have a pretty good idea about what the algorithm values and what they tell us it values. So we do talks and release clues about what that algorithm thinks is important. Um, so first of all, uh, you need to use that target search term along with relevant phrases on the page in order for Google to be able to connect your page to the search term. Uh, we also know that they really value quality. So each page on your site needs to have a beneficial purpose, um, and it should be created uh, first and foremost to help your website users. Um, you can also remember um, EAT to ensure quality. Uh, so that stands for expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. So expertise looks at how fully you've responded to kind of the intent behind the search term. Um, and authoritativeness can be signaled by um, how often other websites are linking to your site or page, um, telling Google that you're an authority on the topic. Um, and trustworthiness um, looks at things like how your visitors behave when they click through to your website, along with how well you're following SEO best practices. Um, so things like uh, including a bunch of spammy links on a page or keyword stuffing in the content. Um, and then there's also uh, your money or your life content. Um, so YMYL, it's the type of information that um, if presented inaccurately um, could really impact the reader's happiness, health, safety, or financial stability. Um, so it's kind of that high stakes content. Um, and if you create a YMYL page with bad advice, bad information, um, that could really impact people's lives and livelihood. And Google takes that very seriously. Um, so experts with that type of expertise should um, absolutely write that YMYL content, um, but be very careful that it's factually correct and beneficial for your audience, um, or else you'll feel that negative impact in your site's rankings. 
All right, so some factors that can impact your results. Uh, first off, we have optimization. So how well of a fit Google thinks your page is for a specific search term. Um, and we'll go over how to optimize your content in just a bit. Then there's competition. So there are certain keywords that your nonprofit is really unlikely to ever rank at number one for. So for example, uh, if you wanted to explore Facebook fundraisers and wrote an article uh, to encourage your supporters to host them, even the most well-optimized page won't unseat Facebook as the number one result for the keyword Facebook fundraisers. Um, so we'll cover uh, selecting keywords in a little bit. Then there's location. Uh, so search results will often bring up locations nearby the searcher uh, that are related to that term that they've searched. Uh, so search engine results can also vary by your location and your nonprofit can attract more local supporters by registering with Google and sharing your address. And there's crawlability. Uh, so search engines use programs called crawlers that visit websites and can index their content, allowing those pages to start ranking. And you can help crawlers find your content by creating an organized map of links between pages on your site. Um, and that helps the crawler to navigate through your content um, going from link to link. And for website performance, uh, search engines prefer to send visitors to well-performing websites um, that load quickly and offer a good user experience. Um, so having a slow loading site uh, with broken pages or features that are inaccessible can really hurt your SEO. And all of these factors together can impact the web pages included and the order that they're included in on a search engine results page. So keyword research. Uh, content should be targeted to one specific search term, uh, but how do you choose the right word to target? So there are lots of different keyword research tools out there to help you really dig in and evaluate all of the different options and select the perfect keyword for a particular page. Uh, but even if you're not an SEO specialist with all of these different SEO tools at your disposal, you can still make a really educated guess about the best keyword to use for a page. Um, you wanna think about your audience and what they would search to find the page in question. And then you can use that to optimize the page. It's, it's really that simple. Um, and it relies on your knowledge of your audience and um, really paying attention to their written and verbal communications with your organization. Um, so for example, you might notice that many of your supporters are using phrases like animal instead of animal rescue uh, when they're talking about um, your organization. And as a result, you might then also decide to use that language on your website and within your chosen keywords. Um, Google Search Console is also a really awesome free tool at your disposal. Uh, you can log in and look at the performance report to see keywords that your website's already ranking for. Um, so you might go in there and see that one of your program pages um, is already ranking fifth for a particular keyword, um, but you have not optimized that page yet. Um, so selecting that keyword and that page and actually optimizing the content um, in hopes of boosting that page from maybe fifth to first um, and getting more of that traffic for the keyword. Because um, the higher up in the rankings your page is, the more likely people are to click through to your site. Again, another joke break. Um, so why do SEO specialists love monkeys? Any guesses? Crickets. Uh, the answer is because they have long tails, which brings us to long tail keywords.
Um, so as you're conducting keyword research, consider using more of these long tail keywords. Um, and these are longer keyword phrases um, that are more specific to the exact content on your web page. Um, so for example, uh, instead of targeting um, grassroots activism uh, for your advocacy page, you might get more specific and target something like environmental grassroots movements in San Francisco. Um, longer tail keywords uh, usually have less volume uh, because they are so specific. Uh, not as many people search them, um, but the people who are searching for them are much more likely to be a really great fit for your content uh, than someone searching a more general term. Uh, and because they're so specific, they also tend to have less competition from other websites talking about this very specific thing, uh, which makes these long tail keywords easier for you to rank for. All right, content optimization. Um, so putting that chosen target keyword into action in your website content. Um, so first things first, you really want to respond to the searcher's intent on your web page. Uh, one of the main components of SEO now is value. Google will assign a quality score to your pages where its algorithm assesses how valuable the page is to the intended audience or searchers of a particular keyword. So as long as you're writing high quality content, uh, you really should be doing okay uh, because most of the same principles apply to writing for SEO and, and writing for real people. Uh, the goal there is to respond to the searcher's intent. So taking the question behind the keyword you're targeting on a particular page and making sure that you're fully answering it so that the searcher does not need to look anywhere else to kind of flesh out all of the related details. Um, so someone searching for animal shelters near me would want to know the location of the nearest animal shelter, but also things like uh, the types of animals the shelter works with and how their adoption program works and which animals are up for adoption and the hours that they can go visit those animals and, and so on. Um, but essentially, if you write content for both real people and search engines, um, you're really covered. Google is super good at analyzing text. Um, unlike you know, back in the day when it first was created, uh, Google al algorithm now can recognize different forms of words, plurals, and, and different prefixes, um, as well as other content that um, is relevant to the keyword. So not every mention of the topic has to be an exact match for that keyword. Uh, which makes it much easier to write naturally and conversationally and create that high quality content uh, for your keyword. Um, so using your target keyword, uh, you wanna take your chosen target keywords and pair them with pages on your website. Um, and then to optimize a page for a keyword, you'll, you'll wanna use the keyword in a few key places on that page. So within the headings, the copy, the meta description, page title, SEO title, um, and the URL. Um, and a quick note on meta descriptions. Um, so search engines pull those descriptions for a page to use as that um, brief bit of text that a user uh, sees before deciding whether or not to click through. So if you can think of them as a pitch to that potential visitor to your website, uh, telling them what they'll find on the page and why they should click through. Um, and of course, remembering to use that target keyword there as well. Um, and then when it comes to using your keyword in headings and copy, uh, you can and should use the keyword more than once, um, but you'll wanna be careful to avoid keyword stuffing. Um, I found that uh, between four and seven, say, in instances uh, tends to be a nice balance. Uh, there is such a thing as using the keyword too much, 
Um, but if you're writing conversationally and creating this quality content that we're talking about, um, it's not typically an issue for SEO on the page. And you'll also want to include links within your content. So very few exceptions. Every page on your website should link to other pages. These links help users navigate your website and can increase the amount of time spent on your website as a whole, um, which then might lead users to taking an action like donating. Um, plus, these internal links um, have lots of different SEO benefits. Um, so we like, like we list here, uh, it shows search engines how pages correlate on your website. It gives search engines a better idea of what your page is about. It assists search engines in finding new pages on your website, uh, and it helps reduce the bounce rate and keep visitors on your site. Um, so while you can see the value in keeping visitors on your website with these internal links, um, some people hate to send them away from your content with an external link. But outbound links are also really important and can lend your content credibility making them really valuable for SEO. Um, so you can kind of think of those like social interactions. If your website is associated with this other website that Google has deemed to be high quality, then linking between the sites benefits both of you. Um, but this is also true if your website kind of hangs out with the wrong crowd. Um, so you wanna be careful which sites you link to. And then we equip most of the websites that we build with a plugin called Yoast SEO uh, that we like for lots of different reasons. It, it helps with some of the more nitty gritty elements of SEO and it gives you a technical analysis for each page. Um, and it'll also give you suggestions for edits and improvements. Um, and I love that it works on a color system. So green means that you're doing really great. Uh, orange means it's okay, but it could be improved. And red means that there's lots, lots more you need to fix in order to optimize the page for your chosen keyword. It's really easy to use. Um, and it can help you improve keyword use. Um, you can add a meta description through it, add an SEO title, and you can also preview um, how your page or post will look as a search result. Um, you can see that here. Right, links and SEO. Um, so like we were talking about, external links to your website can pass on SEO value. Um, Google looks at other websites that link to your site and weigh that in their decision on whether your page will rank in results. Um, but to get around um, a lot of the link schemes that were popular in past years, um, they have been starting to value the quality of those links over the sheer number of links or linking domains to your site. Um, so high quality links will tell search engines that um, you're enough of an authority on the topic uh, that others are willing to send visitors to your site to learn more about it. Kind of like a, a popularity contest of sorts. Um, and it goes back to their EAT stipulations and finding ways to measure the quality and value of a page. Um, so you want to earn links from other websites with content that's relevant to your mission and the pages on your site. Um, and to gain the most benefit, those sites would also be well favored by Google and not spammy. Um, so that leads us to link building, uh, where you research and then reach out to other websites to ask for links or guest articles. Um, it's a ton of work and often incredibly disheartening. I'm sure you've probably ignored plenty of requests for links in your day. Um, but there is a way to get that same value without kind of cold emailing every site with any relation to your nonprofit or mission. Instead, uh, you might look to your partners and other relationships that you've built uh, with organizations in your space um, to see kind of what opportunities are there. Um, 
those are, are much more likely to carry the quality that Google's looking for anyway. Um, plus, um, if you're creating quality content for your website, uh, you're more likely to attract more links naturally, um, which removes the need to search out uh, additional link building opportunities. All right, last joke break. Uh, why do mobile marketers make good parents? Because they're responsive. All right, technical SEO. Um, so technical SEO is also a really important part of an SEO strategy. Your organization needs to check a few boxes uh, just to make sure that your website is optimized for your visitors um, and for search engines. So we can cover a few different opportunities that typically require a developer's skills. Um, so these include uh, mobile responsiveness. So a majority of internet traffic comes from mobile devices. So having a website that adjusts to the user's screen size is really a must. Um, and elements on your website should stack on top of each other. Um, and or you should hide elements that are not necessary on mobile um, or that aren't optimized for mobile. Um, and this list is dependent on your website, um, but it might include things like maps or sliders or videos um, and hero images. And then there's site speed and performance. Um, so how quickly does your site load on mobile and desktop devices? Um, and since a lot of website traffic comes from mobile devices um, and mobile networks, do not uh, tend to be as fast as home networks. Um, your website should be as lightweight as possible so that it downloads quickly on mobile networks. Um, and this means reducing the size of the website by being strategic with the size and number of things like images, videos, fonts, JavaScript, um, and special effects that are on a page. Uh, the longer a website takes to load, the lower its conversion rate is. And we have a couple of stats here. Uh, one to three second load time uh, increases the bounce rate probability by 32%. Uh, one to five seconds load time increases the bounce rate probability by 90%. Uh, one to six seconds uh, increases it by 106%. And one to 10 seconds can increase it by 123%. Um, so it really makes a big difference. Um, and then there's accessibility. Um, so while accessibility is not a direct ranking factor, uh, it does improve the experience of your website for all users. And Google does take usability into account. So that might mean a range of different updates. Um, content accessibility can mean making sure that the headings are in the correct order and follow that heading hierarchy. Um, for design, you want colors on your site to be accessible to users um, with color vision issues. Um, forms should be accessible to users with vision problems. Um, you wanna make sure that interactive elements on your site are accessible to users who need to use keyboard navigation or who need to use speech-based navigation, um, or uh, making sure that the website can be scrolled with one hand. Right. Um, so according to Nonprofit Tech for Goods 2023 report, only 37% of organizations have an SEO strategy in place. Um, I hope that includes at least a few of you. <laughs> um, but even a very basic strategy, uh, like one based on these SEO basics that we're covering today, can really significantly improve uh, the traffic that comes to your website. Uh, and if your website's offering uh, quality, action-oriented content, 
uh, and a really good user experience, uh, that can mean really significantly improving the number of supporters or constituents uh, for your organization. And as you begin using these tips to improve your content, um, it's really important to remember that SEO of any kind shouldn't be viewed as a quick fix for any website issues. Um, it is more of a long game strategy. Um, once you optimize a page or your um, website performance, uh, it can take six months to a year for that page to actually break into search results and for you to start seeing meaningful amounts of traffic coming from search. Um, so it's a strategy that uh, you kind of commit to as you develop and grow your website content. Uh, but over time, um, it has been proven to have a really awesome ROI when it comes to ranking different uh, marketing tactics. Um, so tracking relevant keywords, um, building linking opportunities, updating your content, they're all necessary for improving your SEO rankings slowly over time. Uh, so be patient and think strategically about how users are finding your website um, and how you want them to find your website in search engines. And then you can create high quality content um, that visitors will want to interact with and share. Um, and then before uh, we get into questions, I'm going to pass it over to Ira to talk a little bit about our SEO retainers. Great. Thank you, Christine. And uh, a lot of really good, useful information. I know we had some questions that, that came in here through the, uh, the chat that Deontay and I were answering, but um, feel free for others if you have any questions to start adding them. Uh, just wanted to let folks know, um, as Christine said, you know, these uh, SEO and uh, engagements are not a quick one-time thing that you just do it and then you're done. Uh, it does take constant care and attention to paying attention to, to uh, your various pages and how you're performing. And so we do support many nonprofits uh, in ongoing SEO engagements to make sure that you are fully optimized for SEO and performing various activities that will help do it. So that can be anything from optimizing current uh, page content to working on technical aspects, as well as um, creating new content. A lot of time it's, it's you know, working on and completing several of your blog posts into one so that you have a more authoritative uh, post that Google is going to see about a specific topic. So uh, Christine and several members from our team work on these types of engagements with many groups and have seen fantastic success that um, we would love to work with any of you on. So that's my little uh, two cent commercial. If you have any questions, feel free to ping me on those. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, I think we're, we're happy to open it. If folks have questions, you can either uh, comment in the, uh, in the, the chat or you can even uh, come off mute and ask yourself. Um, I think there was one at the beginning uh, that I know, Matt, you asked about um, what is copy in regards to places to use your keyword? Uh, Correct, yeah, this is uh, copy was mentioned as, as places to use your keyword. I'm just not familiar with the term. Yes, so that's um, all of the page content. Uh, oh, okay. on the page. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's just um, using it in the headings um, as well as just the, the standard text on the page. And Yoast is actually really helpful with kind of reminding you based on how long the page is, how many times you actually need to use it within that text. Um, so it'll tell you if you're using it too much or um, too few times. Any other questions? Following up on that, I will encourage, I know most, of, a lot of you are Corner Shop clients who uh, we built your site and uh, for every site we build, we always install the Yoast plugin. We do a lot of configuration ourselves and uh, before we hand it off to you to make sure that it's set up in the correct way for, for people to access it in general level. However, we often aren't going into specific pages and doing some of the responses there. So there's a lot of opportunities to um, just use that SEO tool kind of 
look at what it's it's kind of flagging as concerns and um, making some some improvements based on just what it suggests there. Hi, I, I had a question. Um, just uh, sorry, I missed the first little bit of the meeting. I, I was in another meeting that ran late. I'm just wondering for for folks who like to get in, get their hands dirty, figuring out how Yoast works and figuring it out ourselves. Um, are there um, any potential hazards or anything that we could? potentially break or ruin on accident from, I, I understand there are some like sketchy SEO things we could do that uh, would in, like, you know, be flagged as being bad, but I, I feel like some of those you we would have to be trying to to do bad things, but like, what are the, what are the things that we could mess up by accident, I guess? So the main, um, accidental SEO um, kind of red flag that I've seen happen is when um, it's it's not something that, that you would do to, um, I guess, really tank your SEO results. Um, the issue I see more is that um, another website um, that is kind of spammy will um, include a bunch of links to your site um, and then Google will think that you are spammy because all of your links are on this super spammy website. Um, and you can, um, there's basically a way to reach out to Google to tell them that you do not wanna be associated with this super spammy site um, that can help kind of uh, build back up that some of that link value. Um, but uh, if you're using the Yoast tool um, and you have it, um, configured uh, properly, it's it's really hard to like purposefully uh, mess up some of these optimization um, recommendations for your website. Go ahead, Matt. Oh, speaking of that, in this in the same uh, you know concept here, where we have like a spammy site, it links to your site. And I guess like, how do you find that out, right? You just kind of have to be doing, you know, organic searches on your own of your own content and seeing who's who's showing up and like find trying to and, like do an analysis of like these other of what sites are linking to you, and then and then like you performing that tool like uh, that tool that um, I re recommended uh, domain analysis moz.com, uh, like doing something like that and then and just seeing how they score and then if they score really poorly going going into like this tool that google has that where you can say please we don't want to associate with these people we don't like them but they they like us apparently um is that the best way to do it to solve the problem um to like become aware uh, if you have a problem like where like a spammy site is linking to yours or is there a better way of, of uh, performing the analysis yes so um google search console will also um kind of give you an alert if you have um bad spam score. Um, so regularly checking that um, can also be really helpful. And then um, that is also the tool that you'll use to tell Google that uh, you're not associated with this spammy site. Um, so it's nice to be able to do it all in, in one tool. Oh, okay. So then the Google search console, you, you'd go there and they would give you a list, like maybe they would tell you how your ranking in terms of it being a spammy site, like or something like that, right? And and they would give you reasons why. Is that correct? Yep, okay, that's cool. Right. And then you, could, then you could do an analysis and say, okay, here are the main people who are who are like you know downgrading our our ranking, and uh, then you could potentially submit that uh, request to Google that says, please don't associate us with these <laughs> these weirdos. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they won't exactly tell you that. Um, it's downgrading your ranking, um, but they do give you a, a spam score um, that they have said uh, will contribute to uh, your website's ability to rank. So, oh, so then, then if, you, if you get a lower score, you have to go in then and do the organic searches yourself to try to figure out who's who's getting your decreasing your ranking, right? Like, oh yes. yeah. So that's, that's, that's some <laughs> it, work. It can, it can get a little tricky. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it kind of sucks because then you have to like wait until your 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 start your score starts going down. You're like, man, our score sucking. You know, and then like, and how long has it been, how long has it been bad for? You know, so it's, it sounds like something you had like an organization would want to like set up a regular, you know, uh, like you know once a month go in and check how you're ranking, and then like if you ever and then like record that data, and then like if you ever start decreasing, then say well, okay, we have to figure out what what heck's going on. So it, it kind of sounds like yeah, that there'd be like an SEO like game plan that you'd have to have. Like, uh, okay, yeah, great. Thanks, that really helps me out. Yeah. So building that strategy to it, it can also um, and should also really include um, steps to take to monitor um, these like spammy links and kind of other uh, technical red flags that we talked about, um, just to make sure that um, aside from growing your um, presence in search results, uh, you're also kind of maintaining and protecting what you've already built. Um, because it, it can really change very quickly when Google will release an algorithm update. Uh, we had a couple questions on the chat here. Um, one from Chris is, if you have a weekly schedule that students check by going to the same wedge web page over and over, is that bad for SEO? actually great for SEO. <laughs> you want um, lots of those returning visitors. Um, it shows that um, your website visitors value your content so much that they come to it over and over and continue to find value in it. Um, yeah, so that if you have pages like that on your website, I would I would definitely prioritize keeping them up to date um, so that you're you're taking advantage of these returning visitors. Um, another question we had is, are you are you oh, it just disappeared. Are you only allowed one focus key phrase? Um, so in Yoast, uh, yes, you want to um, stick to one target key phrase, or else um, it'll kind of uh, finagle how they offer those different recommendations. Um, but uh, in order to kind of have a page rank for multiple different related keywords. Um, Google calls these alternative key phrases, um, but essentially you would just also make sure to work some of those into the content. You know, choosing one main key phrase that is the most valuable, the most used um, in your opinion, um, and then working in a few of those alternative phrases as well. Um, just in hopes of your page also ranking for um, those related terms. Because um, Google is really awesome at connecting uh, similar types of content. Um, so you might notice that um, kind of no matter what phrasing of a topic you search, the results will be um, pretty, like almost identical in some cases. Um, they, they have gotten really good at connecting these different topics and making sure that they're uh, recommending um, the best pieces of content for, for that topic, no matter what the exact phrase is. And related, I think kind of uh, about Yoast, um, it's uh, apparently in the premium version, there is a get related key phrases uh, button and uh, they wanna know if we would recommend that. Um, so, I mean, like I said, you can kind of um, do it with, you can still take advantage of that without the premium version, um, but it is a, a nice little perk. Um, if you already have the premium account or um, you might need some of the other premium features um, to also use that, I don't know that I would recommend it specifically for that feature, um, but but it is a really nice perk if you have the, the premium plan. And the last question I see in the chat here is um, uh, going back to those, those folks who visit the one page over and over again every week. Um, if they do check that and then leave immediately, um, is that bad for bounce rate? And I'm gonna expand that to just say, does bounce rate impact any, any SEO factors? So bounce rate uh, does impact um, SEO factors. Um, Google, through the shift to um, from 
Universal Analytics to um, Google Analytics 4. Um, they've moved from bounce rate to something called engagement rate. Um, so that is basically the amount of time that um, a user has your um, website kind of active on their tab. So if they move to a different tab or window, um, that uh, counts as like losing engagement now. Um, so it's a little bit of a shift in the, the terminology and kind of how that works. Um, but it, it does impact um, SEO. So uh, you wanna make sure that uh, the content on that page is, is um, enough to you know, capture that person's engagement for um, you know, at least, you know, 15 to 30 seconds. Um, lower than that, um, it, I would say, it would negatively impact that, that SEO. Yeah, bounce rate is one that's always, you know, it's, it's something that a lot of folks use, but it, it always doesn't necessarily mean like it sounds like in your case, it's not necessarily a bad thing that they're immediately leaving because they're coming, getting the information they need and then leaving. And that's what you want to provide to your supporters. So uh, my perspective is is never been to place too much emphasis on that bounce rate as it um, is a little misleading as you're not getting the full context of what folks are doing. So. Um, one of my favorite questions, I'm really glad Dana asked this, is uh, is that they're having a hard time uh, convincing the content creators that SEO is worth their time. So what strategies or KPIs should the web team be, be pulling to, to prove that SEO is a benefit to the organization? That's so I, I'll, I'll let you talk about yeah. <laughs> I really like looking um, in Google Analytics um, at traffic from organic search. Um, and then once you kind of filter into that specific people coming from search engines to your website, uh, you can narrow it down to actions that they're taking on your website, um, other like really important key pages that they're visiting, um, and basically determine their value from there. Um, so if you're tracking um, conversions on your website, um, so things like email signups and donations and event registrations, you can see that this visitor came from search. They signed up for our email list. So now we can communicate with them um, whenever we like and uh, use that to kind of create a long term strategy to uh, convert that person into a, a lifelong supporter. Um, so digging into that, uh, it you can see basically increasing the, the amount of traffic on your website um, can be super, super valuable um, to uh, increasing the number of actions and conversions that people are taking in support of your mission and goals. So, so part of me uh, going from that, like, let's say you're trying to convince, you know, your the administrative to like, you know, give you more money so you can focus more on SEO. You might look at that your Google Analytics and say, ah, look at this, our organic search is low, um, and it should be higher. Um, you know, if you just look at you know analysis of websites in general or something like that, and then you could say, and SEO is what is drives these organic searches. So we should this should be the the, the reason why we want to invest more money. In, into uh, um, SEO in, in for our website. Okay, is that right? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I I think there's often the stigma. You know, I've I've heard this comment before that that you know a lot a lot of times content creators will say, oh, I didn't need to focus on this, and so um, it's oftentimes because there's that stigma that people think that like writing for seo is like writing for machines and you have to write in this way and i think like keyword stuffing back in the day gave this a bad name but what google's really looking for going back to one of those first slides is that they're looking for good content quality content that's authoritative and so writing a good article that's good for seo is going to be good for your supporters as well and so you know people don't want to go to five different articles to get the information they need they want everything in one comprehensive 
post. And that's what Google is is showing off for. Um, I always give the example of like, I, I search for a lot of food recipes and stuff. And so like, when you're searching for like the best tomato soup recipe, you're gonna get an, you know a bunch of articles that describe what tomatoes to use and how to cook it and what heat it should be at, because you don't wanna be bouncing around to several different articles. And Google knows that it's gonna give uh, everybody that full comprehensive information. So it's a lot of times not even, I think some of those those metrics are always good to look at and can give you a lot of good uh, ammunition when, when talking with folks. But it's also just emphasizing that building good content that Google wants to see is also what people wanna see and is gonna, gonna benefit um, getting more people to that content. Any other questions? Oh, it looks like there's one about um, finding a way to see what is auto-generated by Yoast. Um, oh, and Deontay gave a couple different websites that will let you see this. Um, mainly, though, it's um, the it tends to be the first. Um, I think it's 150 characters um, of the of the page um, by default. Um, but uh, that said, that that's not always uh, the most you know strategic meta description that you uh, might want to include for the page. So uh, creating custom meta descriptions for your most important pages um, and especially the pages that you are uh, trying to optimize for SEO. Uh, is really important to just uh, give the best pitch for your page uh, to searchers that you can. I actually did have a, another question. Um, if we have if we have a page on our site that's not necessarily a page that we're wanting people to find or searchable, like it's not necessary. It's more of like a you know very specific audience, and say that page doesn't have a great SEO score, will that affect other pages or will that affect the overall um, listing score like for the pages that we do want people to find or that we want it to rank higher? Um, so if you don't want search engines to be able to find a page on your website, um, there is a setting in Yoast that allows you to easily hide that page from search engines. Um, a lot of times people will do that for like um, thank you pages on your website um, because you don't want uh, someone who did not donate to find your, you know, thanks for donating page. Um, uh, so I, I'll see people, people do that a lot. Um, and it, it just basically hides that page from um, search engine crawlers. Uh, so they won't be able to to find and access it, and it won't um, hurt your SEO ranking at all. That also goes for pages with very little content um, or even system generated pages. So if you have like a custom post type that's, you know, putting things in like a, a search results or something and and we're hiding some of those uh, pages, make sure that some of those things are are hidden from public view because sometimes they're not styled well or they might just have like, you know, a, a short expert a, a excerpt of text and uh, that can sometimes hurt your rankings as well when you have a bunch of pages without any real beneficial content. Gotcha. Okay. So that's a, that's a good point. So, so in general, it, it can affect uh, even, even if we don't, like, even if it's a page where it's, it's fine that it's searchable, but if it's not that great for um, a score, it still can affect negatively, like on your overall, uh, overall score, like your, the pages that we want to rank higher. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and I would just also like to chime in with the point that Christine made earlier about organizations hiding their thank you pages for certain forms. Uh, one of the reasons this takes place is to also help um, better track your conversion rate in Google Analytics. So usually that 
in Google Analytics, that conversion rate is usually tied to someone landing on a specific page. So if someone just happens to come across that page who didn't fill out a form or who didn't make a donation, it's going to make that conversion rate look way higher than it actually is, which kind of affects your ability to market that page and figure out exactly how many people are converting on that particular page. Great. Well, we are almost at the top of the hour. I don't see any other questions. I really appreciate uh, folks who have uh, joined and participated in these questions. Really helpful. Um, again, if you have any further, we're always happy to continue this conversation. You can uh, email myself, Christine, or Deontay uh, directly, uh, just our first names, at Corner Shop Creative. Uh, and you can always email our support team, support at cornershopcreative.com. Um, I'll also post in here a, a, a blog that we created. Um, we'll send this out and the recording out over email um, to, to folks registered. But uh, this is a great blog post that just summarizes a lot of the, the pointers that, that Christine mentioned, as well as others that um, could be helpful for folks to implement. So uh, thank you all again for, for joining today and uh, look forward to, to continuing some conversations and optimizing your sites around this. Oh, oh yeah. Um, this is being recorded and the recordings can be made available. How do we get that? Uh, we're going to, we'll email that out to all folks who registered. So, so you'll get that. Uh, if you don't get that in the next uh, couple of days, uh, feel free to email us, but uh, we'll, we'll be sending that out uh, very short, very soon. Great. Perfect. All right. Thank you all so much. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.